Now we start with chapter 16, which is about Deva and Asura, the Daivik and Asuric nature. It's quite an interesting study, actually. <clears throat> the qualities which are here listed for the Daivik and Asuric nature. Let us look into them. Shri Bhagavan Vacham Abhayam Sattva Samshuddhim Samshuddhir Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti Danam Damascha Yajnascha Svadhyaya Stapa Arjavam So there is the whole list of in three different verses Ahimsa Satyam Akrabhah Tyagah Shantir Apaishutnam Daya bhuteshu lo bhuteshvalu lo luptvam ma <coughs> sorry mardavam harir achapalam <coughs> tejak shamang dhritik shaucham adroho nati manitam bhavanti sampadam daivim abhijatasya bharatam So Sri Bhagavan Vacha, all three shlokas in one go. Mm, Shubhendra translates them here. I will translate myself and then read what Shubhendra says. The blissful Lord said, Abhayam, fearlessness, sattva samshuddhih, total purity by purification by sattva guna, jnana yoga vyavastitih, and the state of jnana yoga. Constantly recognizing oneself, one's own realization in this life. Dhanam, giving. Dhamascha, uh, controlling one's own senses and mind. Yajnascha, sacrifice, constant transformation of one's nature. Svadhyayach, um, reading for oneself the sacred texts. Tapach, the concentrated effort of consciousness, arjavam, straight, uh, straightforwardness or uh, sincerity we can translate. Hmm? Uh, ahimsa, not hurting anyone, satyam, truthfulness, akrodhach, and not uh, being the absence of wrath, uh, that's how she went. Tiagach, uh, constant um, um, sannyasa, tiaga, constantly leaving. Um, oh, I will see how he translates. Self denial, that's how he translates. Chantich, peace. Apaishunam, absence of fault finding. This is an interesting absence of gossip and uh, backbiting, yeah, this kind of. Uh, daya, uh, compassion, bhuteshu, in all, to all beings. Aloluptvam, uh, absence of greed. Loluptvam is the, uh, the quality of always wanting to get something. Mardavam, softness. Harih, modesty. Achapalam, um, being free from restlessness. Tejah, uh, energy. Shama, forgiveness. Dhritih, um, literally uh, steadfastness, which he translates pa patience, that, that which can hold against all the um, difficulties. Uh, shaucham, cleanness. Uh, adrohach, absence of envy or pride. Nati manita, that is also the absence of pride. Adrohach, absence of uh, betrayal or 
Oh, he, he translates them both, absence of envy and pride, adroha and uh, atimanita, natimanita. These are the wealth of the man, bhavanti sampadam daivim, born into the deva nature. These are bhavanti sampadam daivim, the wealth divine, abhijatasya, of the one who is born into it, or Bharata. So if we go through them again, we can see that these are major qualities which we want to learn also from the mother in Sri Aurobindo. Yes, Abhayam, fearlessness, that could be courage. Yeah? samshuddhi is purity of sattvic state of the mind. Jnana Yoga Vyavastiti, state of constant self-realization or in the yoga of self-realization, seeking one's own self, true self. Um, dhanam, generosity, one of the qualities. Dhamascha, the control of the senses, self-control, he translates. Yajna, sacrifice. Uh, Svadhyayach, a study of scriptures or learning for oneself, using the scriptures as the sacrifice. Tapach, askesis, arjavam, kando and straightforwardness. We can translate from also as sincerity, straightforwardness. Ahinsa, harmlessness. Satyam, truth. Um, Akrodhach, absence of wrath. Uh, Self-denial. Mm, Tiagach. Denial of one's own desires, yeah, so to say. To calm, shanti, apaishunam. Absence of fault finding in others which is actually a divine quality, not to look for the, for the problems in others, yes? <laughs> there, there is enough problems with our, ourselves yes, to find and to deal. And um, the one who really does this, he already sees that all the faults and the difficulties are already within him. So he cannot really rely on that in others, so he can find it fault in them because he sees this in himself. Uh, daya, mm, compassion to all beings, Bhuteshu, Aloluptvam, absence of greed, um, Mardavam, softness or gentleness, as he translates. Rih, Rih is also shyness or modesty, uh, Achapalam, um, not moving too much or not talking useless things also. Yes, small talks and all this useless, endless talks which people usually enjoy. He translates as um, absence of, oh sorry, freedom from restlessness. Then tejach, energy, kshama, forgiveness. Dhritih, patience or steadiness, shaucham, uh, cleanness, adrohach and natimanita is absence of envy and pride. And these are the features of the divine nature. Yeah. You have any anything to add? You can see here uh, Yama Niyama already. You can see all the qualities of 12 qualities of the mother if you want to kind of to put them into this format. I can see them here, all, all them. They're just given with other words. Yeah? No comments? Maybe I'm running too fast. Oh, uh, Vladimir, is he equating the Devi nature with the Sattvic nature, or is it something more than that? 
This is a good question. I think he is more speaking about Daivik and Asuric nature okay. uh, in the bigger kind of modality of things. Yeah? So that is something in us which is of Daivik nature and something of in us is of Asuric. And uh, Arjuna is very worried, actually, in the next slokas you will see to what nature he belongs. Yeah? Mm. And he says, don't worry, you belong to the Daivik nature, so you're, you're fine, you're safe. <laughs> because this nature is very difficult to change in, the, in one incarnation. Yes? Very difficult, really. Uh, because um, all these natures need fulfillment in us or in the evolution of consciousness in some way or another. You know? We have to try them out, so to say, these features of both natures. And uh, if you look into how Sri Aurobindo describes uh, different manvantaras from the beginning of Kalpa, you will see exactly that, that he speaks about Paishachik, you know, uh, Pashu Paishacha, first manvantara, so the most and the lowest movements of consciousness were uh, worked out. You know? And then the Rakshasik Paishachik, then Asurik Paishachik, Asurik Rakshasik, then finally Daivik Rakshasik, Daivik Paishachik, Daivik Asurik. So this, this, nature, this nature is kind of evolving and has to cover all possibilities. So to look with it uh, on to it with divine eyes, there is no judgment. Yeah? There is just recognition of nature. So some people belong totally to the divine nature. And the divine nature, Shivendra says, is that, that uh, the devas are looking always beyond the mind, towards something higher than the mind, yes, towards the super mind. That is their orientation. For the asuras, the orientation is buddhi, and everything below buddhi. Yeah? They want to manage the world by the uh, re pure reason, as it were, by the mind. Rakshasas are operating within the manas, sense mind and senses. Paishachas are very sensual, it's always about senses. So all these levels of consciousness had to be worked out before we arrive at some higher possibility. We had this uh, in our class on, on the Veda, partially we touched upon. There is a beautiful passage of Sri Aurobindo describing these levels, these manvantaras, giving their definitions. So over a long period of time, we were evolving in a particular format, working out a certain you know, pattern of nature, which had to be worked out and then overcome. That's why most probably the Asuras are elder brothers of the gods, yes? Because they were there before the gods. We had to work out their nature first. So we already know what is to be Asuric, what was to, to be barbaric in nature. We know it very well. You can see it in the war. When the war comes and all the moral kind of standards are removed. You can see that all this lower nature from the past is rising to the surface, yeah? All this barbaric killing and uh, raping and uh, torturing, all that which was in the past already kind of fulfilled, once more wants to be fulfilled, yeah? And to grab our consciousness and eat our energy. Somebody switched on. So. Can I can I uh, please uh, inquire please something? Um, yes. The 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 um, question for me is: How does one delve deep enough in one's own consciousness to understand the truth behind? the movement of the rakshasas and the, I'm just going to call them asuras, demons, whatever. How does one delve deep enough in one's consciousness to find 
the truth behind the actions of these um, assurance. Well, we have to have a bigger That's picture even than that, yeah? In, we have to uh, see the evolutionary uh, metaphysical uh, view, yeah? What Shirobindo has and what he gives us, uh, that our fall, you know, uh, was necessary. We had to start from the bottom up uh, and slowly we started to evolve out of the material in conscience. And how could we evolve out of that in conscience, which is suffocating and narrowing down all the operations of consciousness, if not by those, you know, arsoric elements, which are self-asserting, survival, and so on. Yeah? So this mm -hmm. is how it was done. Certain things were mm, achieved certain independence in the body, certain powers in the body, slowly evolved. Yeah? And now we are using them. And we want more in, from consciousness, but we are using still the inherited body from the past. So this is our dilemma, our problem. One foot is in the past, other is in the future. So we are in this position, transitional being. Um, so it has yeah. its wealth, value when you come there. On that level of consciousness, if there is no other, it will have its value. But on this level where we are, it loses its value. We cannot go there back. We cannot go backward you know, because we are always mm -hmm. moving forward. I do not know whether it answers. I think I answer it metaphysically rather than psychologically. But so what you're, you're saying is we have all evolved out of this state. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I mean, or we are evolved. We are evolving out of this state. Yes, we are still <laughs> evolving. Yes. Um, yes, we are evolving out of this state. Um, and so in order to find the truth behind this state, um, well, see, that's my dilemma there. I, I just, uh, I am trying to understand all of the uh, assured activities that are going on on the planet right now and, um, and to get to the truth behind those. I mean, I can go from one to another and try to, to see the good that's coming out of each one, even though it's, uh, a very, uh, evil force doing this and, it takes a lot of concentration, uh, I, I'm finding, a whole lot of concentration and a lot of searching. Um, it's a lot, of, a lot of work. <laughs> Absolutely. It's much easier to fall back into that state of the previous development. It's much easier to become a beast than to really, uh, you know, uh, develop this abhayam, the fearlessness, to develop the purity yeah. sattvic. Uh, jnana yoga status, uh, the giving, real giving, not false giving, not uh, asuric giving you know, for the sake of um, getting something. Self-control, yeah. these are difficult uh, matters, not easy to achieve, as you see, for the asuric, especially for that formation, what we already achieved. So these are the the aims of our evolutionary process. We want them. We recognize them as true, don't we? We feel so good when we read about them. We feel, oh, this yes. is what it is, so nice. I want it, I want it more. I had it once in a while, I have it, but I want it constantly. Can I have it constantly? <laughs> Without yes. falling back uh -huh. into this me and myself. And, hmm. Well, I can see the, the little uh, things that, well, not some of them are pretty big, but the things that go on in my life that happen to me and, um, and um, just wondering, you know, um, why, this, why this happened. And then um, I'll, I'll just give an example. I don't, I, the other day, I unfortunately uh, made a very sharp turn, more than a sharper than I should have. And I, I hit the curb and I absolutely blew my tire out. And um, I, uh, ooh, it scared the living daylights out of me. But anyway, as it turns out, I take it in to get a new tire. And this, uh, this person, I had bought this car that was, it was a used car. 
uh, last year, it was a 2019, a used car, it had 25,000 miles on it. And the person that was putting the, the people that were putting the tires, and he said, you have dry rot on these tires. And he says, uh, you, you have to um, uh, get new tires. And he said, you know, this is probably a good thing. This has happened to you because, you know, um, it's something worse could have happened later. So um, I just kind of, you know, go on uh, through my life kind of like that because I know that when something happens to me that is, I'm not, you know, particularly um, in the mood for, I don't know, <laughs> whatever, is, whatever be the word, um, prepared for, um, I uh, seem, it seems to evolve and work itself out for the good. Yeah, but, uh, but, the, these, yeah. these accidents are need, needed for you, actually, to try out how far you, <laughs> you establish those qualities within, yeah? These are all inequalities. Yeah. There is none of them outer quality, notice. So it's only right. your reaction, how you would react to what is coming. Would you start yeah. kind of manipulating with the truth because it is, it is easier for you to get what you want? For example, the tie is broken and he will ask, did you really break it now? And you say, no, it was broken from before because it would be easier to get it replaced. So here we have it, yeah? You will have always a dilemma to be angry or not, to be angry with, it, with what happened, to be harmful to mm -hmm. somebody or not, to stay in peace, to, to start to, you know, blaming someone or not. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. So on and so yes. forth. Yes. <laughs> so maybe that's what um, I, I guess I just kind of would like to say maybe that's what I need what we need to do is just to uh well watch these things evolve or whatever it, they are I mean is this what some people need um well it, the assured uh qualities to evolve out of them and that's what's happening in a lot of cases um with the dilemmas and the problems that are going on in the planet now that um we're supposed to just I mean, live in a higher reality ourselves so that we can help bring this up, these things, these other uh, worldly situations up, but to just allow them to evolve? Well, it know. depends only on you, what is happening to you, yes? So the outer yeah. world is yeah. challenging all of us. We are all yeah. highly challenged now. So now we have to right. reveal those highest qualities we can, if we can. That would be great. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. only for that reason. There is no other reason. And we have to be steady in the truth, steady in our choice. Yes, this forgiving others, Absolutely. their mistakes, and um, whatever they mean, yes, to others and so on. Yeah. Being less, uh, all this system of qualities is so important but no, let us look into the uh, asuric qualities and it will tell us something interesting we will see where okay. we are sometimes more often than we want to be dambho darpo timana shakrodakh paurush parushyam evacha ajnanam chabhijatasya partha sampadam asurim so Sampadam Asurim is the wealth of the Asuric nature, is Dambach, pride, Darpach, arrogance, Atimanach, excessive self-esteem. You don't need to say it to others. You could feel it yourself, yeah? that you are superior in some way. You feel that superiority complex within you don't need to outside you can play humble because you are superior anyhow so kroda <laughs> you are the angry one the anger harshness parushyam you're very harsh with others and with people and with animals and with beings which do not cannot answer like plants you know or something you could feel harshness sometimes strange coming from elsewhere, from somewhere from below, from outside somewhere. Ajnanam, um, ignorance, 
And these are the qualities of Asura. He will give more. Now look at this more. Daivi sampadam mokshaya, sampadi mokshaya, nibadhanaya asurim mata. Mashu chak sampadam daivim abhijato si pandava. This is what he says to Arjuna. The daivic qualities lead towards liberation. Sampad uh, vimokshaya. And asurik towards bondage. Nibadhanaya asuri mata. Grieve not, Mashuchach, thou art born in the Deva nature, O Pandava, O Arjuna. You are Daivik in nature, so nothing to worry. Uh, I was thinking about myself, actually, quite seriously, whether I am in Daivik or Asuric nature. Uh, let us uh, read, because it is very subtle, yeah? It is not what you present or what you want to believe or what you want to, uh, to even present to yourself, you know, about yourself. It is something within which, which reacts automatically, naturally within you. And then I decided that I am in direct nature for myself. <laughs> I'm just sharing with you, not to promote myself. <laughs> but every one of you have to decide it for yourself, really. Let us look into the Asuric nature, and then you will see that there could be doubts. Dvau bhuta sargao loke smin daiva asura evacha daivo vistaratach vistara shach prokta daivo vistara shach prokta asurim parthame shrenu. So there are two creations in this world, daivik and asurik. Daivach, you heard in the um, kind of in details, this Tarashach, um, and now listen to the Asuric nature. What is Asuric? There will be a long list of Asuric qualities. And these are interesting to dwell on. Pravrittim cha nivrittim cha jana na viduch Asurach. Na shaucham na pi cha charach, acha acharach, na satyam te shuvidyate. Asuric men have no true knowledge of the way of action or the way of abstention. Truth is not in them, nor clean doing, nor faithful observance. Now, let us go through these terms. Pravrittim is beginning of action. Nivrittim is the end of action or absence of action. So the beginning and end of the every action, they do not know. People of Asuric nature do not feel when to stop and when to start. This is amazing. I've seen many people in my life and this is the quality number one. They do not, they cannot stop doing things. They just carry it by the energy without even um, meaningful stop. So they will pile up things on the top, on the top, on the top again, and more and more and more knowledge, more knowledge. Well, what for? You didn't get the first part. You already want the third part, the fourth part, the sixth part. Why? What is the reason of piling up all these treasures if, if there is no um, change in you, if there is no real reflection upon what you got? So there is no jnana yoga, yeah? uh, that, that quality of self-knowledge or self-learning. So they do not know the right beginning and the end of any action. Nashaucham, they do not have sense of what is pure and impure. They can mix these two here. Yeah. So jokes, some kind of, I had with this problem, that's why I had these thoughts about myself, to which nature I belong, because I could joke very easily about everything. But then I found that Shirobindu is also a joker. So I, I kind of... <laughs> 
it was a relief a bit for me that maybe, but his jokes are royal jokes. They are on such high level. Yeah, never low, never this kind of, you know, middle, mediocre jokes. Na acharach, also very important. There is no proper behavior. Hmm? Uh, and clean doing, as he calls. Achara is that uh, from we hear acharya, to be where you want to follow the, the doing because it is like exemplary action. Satyam na teshu vidyate. There is no truth in them. They are not looking for truth. Truth is not um, an, uh, an aim for them. It's not the driving force. Truth does not exist. They can create truth. Whatever they consider to be truth, they make it, yeah? This is our story. You can see this nowadays in media, especially in, in on television, <laughs> where people create truth on, you know, and change it every day. Incredible. This is our story. Yeah. And then more. Asatyam apratishtham te jagat ahuh anishvaram aparaspara sambhutam kim anyat kama hai to kam. The world is without God, anishvaram, they say, not true, asatyam. The world is just an illusion in which we fulfill our will and desires, yeah? not founded in truth, apratishtham, asatyam, jagat, ahu, they say, anishvaram, without the Lord, without Ishvara, without God, brought about by a mutual union, aparaspara, sambhutam, with desire for its sole cause. Kiman yat kama hai to come. What is else there other than desire for its own aim? Is there anything else in this world? You desire, you get it. Why do you speak about some truth somewhere knows, God knows where, some God you created for yourself to cheat on others, yes? Why do you do this? Yeah. Just follow your desire. The, the law of attraction. You remember all these TED Talks? <laughs> Whatever you desire, you get. <laughs> this is absolutely <laughs> Asuric movement. <laughs> desire your house, put it on the fridge, imagine what house you want, and it will come to you, this law of attraction. <laughs> There are so many schools nowadays, psychological movements, who are propagating this kind of uh, philosophy of desire. There is no God. There is no other higher purpose. There is no evolution of consciousness. There is no you growing. There is you and your desire. <laughs> so <laughs> go for it. <laughs> yeah. Marta, you want to say something? Huh? Kind of leaning towards the screen. Robert and I were just saying to each other how we see this so much in the world today. Mm -hmm. These, uh, the, we're supposed to be living in a post truth society, some people say. Yet, uh, truth is so paramount and has a, an important value mm -hmm. and power. It yes. has a power. That's True. why everybody tries to imitate the truth, you know, to yes. make it work. Yes, absolutely. Satyam eva jayate. Yes, there is only truth which prevails at the end. Whatever we do, whatever fake truth we can create, it all disappears. It lives only one day. Next day, there is another lie, another lie. You cannot sustain that. Truth lives, truth stays. These truths disappear like uh, hotcakes. They generate them constantly and they are just vanishing. You don't even remember so many lies were there already so that you don't know what is next. 
This is the Asuric uh, force, yes, which generates desires. I have today this desire, that's the truth of it. And especially in this period of subjective age, where we are moving towards the deeper inner discovery of ourselves, that layer in between surface and inner is full of desires and forces. And we all kind of, uh, without knowing, we allow them to act. Excuse me, Vladimir. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to clarify um, uh, something about the hostile forces. Yeah. Because what I understood about the the type of wars is the the Asuric are are some some one entities which they haven't conscience and then can evolve. They they are not in the evolution process because they they haven't conscience because they belong from the type of wars. Uh, is is this true, or there are another another um, Asuric concept? That is also typal uh, beings. Yeah, all of them are typal beings. This is not about really what um, it's, it is. It, it is about us. Are we open to what forces we are open? Yeah? What forces we are working out? Either Daivik, which are also typal forces, or the Asuric, which are typal forces whom we allow to enter, whom we allow to settle and act within us yes, and guide us and drive us mm, and inspire us. So here we are, uh, we are in this uh, dilemma. Yeah, sorry. And then what we are talking about now is the influence of the hostile forces, isn't it? Oh, yeah, we are constantly influenced by both forces. What is interesting in this chapter that he speaks about two natures, that the human beings are separated into two natures. Some of them are of divine nature and others are of asuric nature. And most probably it is something what humanity still has to work out. Yeah, this is how I think about asuric nature in humanity because it is not yet finished. You remember we were joking before that many of the beings, uh, many species disappear, all the animals disappear. Where do they all go? They are born in human bodies. <laughs> human creatures are increasing in numbers. So they have to work out a lot of nature, which was in the past. I'm joking now, but there is some truth in it, some grain of truth that the evolution catches, goes deeper into the lower layers of evolution, taking with it more and more creatures upward, so to say. And they have to, those souls who become finally aware of themselves, have this uh, very rapid evolutionary process of working out even Asuric nature. I hope I'm not complicating too much, but these are the th thoughts which are coming from this thinking where these people of Asuric nature are coming from. Yeah? Why they are adopting that nature and not Daivik. It's so much easier to be Daivik because it's truer, e lighter. It is much more of energy preserving. <laughs> In every way it is better. <laughs> healthier than to be Asuric. Asuric is a heavy burden. And that's what he will say in the next shloka. It's a heavy work. So what, what is your Siegfried? Sorry, I'm talking more than you. Go ahead. Uh, oh, yes, I, I have now. I want to continue my question, but I, I, can, I can give you an answer about why there is yeah, a lot me. of people uh, influenced by the Asuric forces, because uh, we depends of our, our uh, we, we we are depending of the models of the society, 
And if you watch TV, you watch Netflix, you watch this kind of films, or or you watch the the news and what the politicians are uh, uh, show the attitude, the 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 lacks of honesty and all of this. I think the models of our society at the moment are Asuric. This is what I think. Many psychopathy leaders in the CEO, in the corporations. And I think they are the models. I agree, I agree. The models, yes. But I'm also watching Netflix and somehow it influences me just the opposite way. It tells me, wow, I, I don't want this. I want something better. I can't believe this is happening. I'm all, always kind of working with myself. So I think somewhere it is within to decide the nature, that inner nature, yes, can be, um, if you have it totally revealed or if the psychic would come to the front as Shubindu somewhere says, then even in, the, in hell, it will see only heaven around it. <laughs> so um, there is something about um, inner development which we lack. And because of that, we are easily falling a prey for these forces. They, be, they make us victims because we are so weak. It's easy to grab us and to influence us with our own ideas. And the ideas, I totally agree. They are 100, not 100, 95% Asuric. Once in a while, you see some beautiful film with a high ideal of some from, you know, from Disney <laughs> or something. But it's very rare, very rare. Yeah, but I, what I want to ask about my, my question is uh, the concept of the Asuric uh, forces are conscience or not? Because I think it's the point, because if they are not conscious, they can't evolve, isn't it? They are conscious. They're all fo conscious forces, but they evolved on a particular level of consciousness, starting from the inconscient, one by one. Yeah? Yeah. Why the desire, the karma is the deepest among them drive. That karma broke through all the prohibitions, all the negations of our being. It survived, it pushed forward the whole evolution. It needs a power very strong dark fire power to really make it work yeah but it doesn't mean that that power should always stay or dominate our nature once we evolve the higher yeah so this is the contradiction yes? between previous development and further development and beings which went farther and need more of that higher development when they are dragged down they feel very uncomfortable it's uh, when you pushed, you, you are pushed upward, it's much easier than to be uh, dragged down when you don't want. Yeah? And it's easier to fall down. You have to only relax your effort to move forward and you fall back into the, this past, evolutionary past. So we are all of this kind. Somewhere Vivekananda once said, uh, I sometimes I am like the divine or something like the higher consciousness. And once in a while, I am worse than the pig or something. So you can think of it that we are, we, we embody the huge range of possibilities, yes? In this evolutionary scale. Just look at the human beings from this point of view without judgment, yeah? Uh, and then you will see something very interesting. There was uncanonized um, uh, gospel from Eve. You know, there are many gospels which were not canonized by uh, Catholic church. They just were brushed away. So one of them was um, the gospel of Eve. And God comes to Eve and tells her that you think that I created man in vain? Yeah, this is the dialogue between him and Eve. No, not in vain I created him. 
whatever is the most glorious in the glory is no more is not higher than your glory she he says to to her as a man as a woman whatever is the worst the lowest in the law that is not lower than your law can you imagine so there is no higher than man can achieve and there is no lower than the man can fall. This is the range in which we are. So we have to see it and choose the right path. <laughs> That's it. We can, we can move in every direction. We can go down, down and fall down. We can go down and transform the inconscient or we can rise up and bring the higher light to the lowest and to start to making order there, helping other beings to, to receive that light also. This is possible. And well, that's what Sri and mother did. And that's what they taught us. And um, so when we look at this Daivik and Asuric nature, we should see also this picture of integral yoga. Yeah? On this vast uh, scale of our evolutionary development. Yeah. And then, can, can we say everyone is in the evolving process? Right. All the center beings are in the evolving process? Yes, in this physical body, yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Without physical body, it's a different story, but once we are here in the physical frame, yes, we are constantly evolving, even if we don't want to. And and there's there are beings which they are not in the in the in the they don't have body men, and they are not in they haven't conscience, isn't it? They have consciousness and always they have their own. All well, every one of them. The, the lowest in conscience is also conscious <clears throat> of its involved consciousness. Subconscious has also its own dark consciousness. Everyone has consciousness on a particular mm -hmm. level or in particular way. Yeah? Consciousness is pervading all. Okay. I, I then can't imagine the, that somebody doesn't have consciousness. The, the, the only... The only um device which they have in conscience are the artificial intelligence isn't it they have their own yes way of being which they want to preserve the, and since they are typal being they can't they don't have any other choice yeah so that is the only choice given to them to keep up with what they are and once they evolve to this but for them to change the level to grow in consciousness, they have to come down to man and through man to evolve and change. Okay, okay. I, I now understand. I get it. They are typical beings which they don't have the, the possibility to evolve, but they can evolve if, if they embody them. Isn't it? Right, absolutely. And that's what okay. Mother Shubinda says. They okay, okay. Say thank that, you. Uh, even great gods, if they want to change and grow, they have to take a human body. Yeah, now it's clear, thank you. Right, that's why they are attracted to us because there's something going on there for them also. There is some piece of cake there waiting for them one way or another. <clears throat> Good and bad forces, both, they can grow and evolve through us. All right, and then hetam drishtim avashtabhya. Oh, we are so already. Evam drishtim avashtabhya nashtat manach alpa buddhayach, alpa buddhayach, prabhavanti, prabhavanti yugra karmanach, kshayaya jagato hitach. So, etam drishtim avashtabhya, following this philosophy, let us say, this vision. Nashtatmanach, destroying themselves, their true selves, Alpa Buddhayach, with weak Buddhis, 
bhavanti, prabhavanti, they become ugra karmanach, creating terrible doings, a heavy burden doings, uh, heavy karma doings, let us say, even like this. Um, kshayaya jagato ahitach, for the destruction of the world, they who are not, uh, who are evil. Here is the translation, leaning on that way of seeing life and by its falsehood, ruining their souls and their reason, the Asuric man become the center or instrument of a fierce, titanic, violent action, a power of destruction in the world, a fount of injury and evils. Yeah. So once you follow that um, vision where there is no truth, no God, there is only you and your desire, and this whole this world is a particular Maya in which if you can realize what you want, then this would be the outcome. Yeah. Kamam ashritya dushpuram dambhamana madanvitaha mohad grihitvasad grahan pravartanti shuchivrata. This is even so resorting to insatiable desire. Kama Mashritya Dushpuram, very difficult to fulfill, to feel the insatiable desire. Uh, arrogant, Dambha, full of self esteem, Mana, and drunkenness of their pride, Madan Vitach. So it's one word, Dambha, Mana, Madan Vitach, those who are uh, made of Dambha. That means this full of self-esteem, mana, uh, so arrogance, uh, self-esteem, and um, there is another word, not drunkenness, but not madness. We've spoke about this word before. Carelessness, carelessness, yeah? no boundaries. Everything is possible. I don't care. That's what it's called. Mada, being drunk, being totally out of control. Um, these misguided souls delude themselves more hard, grihitva, persist in the false and obstinate aims, grihitva asad grahan pravartante, and pursue the fixed and pure resolution in their longings, ashuchi vratah. This is, uh, and then there is one more, and one more for the asuras. Maybe we should read them and then we discuss a little. Chintam aparime yamcha pralayantam upashritah kama upabhoga parama kamo pabhoga parama Etavat iti nishitach. They imagine that desire and enjoyment are all the aim of life, and in their inordinate and insatiable pursuit of it, they are the prey of a devouring, measurelessly unceasing care and thought and endeavor and anxiety till the moment of their death. This is what I was telling that Asuras are working hard. <laughs> they have a difficult life. You think it's easy to live their life, trying to fulfill their desires all the time in the battle with others? And chintam, chinta can be thought or can be also worry, aparimeyam, which cannot be measured, immeasurable worry, pralayantam. Uh, uh, till the end of pralaya, till the end of the world, this worry is there. Upashritah. They, they found refuge in the worry immeasurable till the end of the world. Kama upabhoga parama, who find only the enjoyment in the realization of desire. Etavat, this is how it is. 
itinishitach, they decided. They decided this is how it should be. And then there is the whole list of more qualities for the asuras, one, two, three, four, four shlokas, <laughs> all of them about asuras. <laughs> which is quite interesting because it is psychological here. It's less qualities, more how they behave. Uh, api me bhavishyati punardhanam asaumaya hatakh shatru hanye hanishye chaparan api ishvaroham aham bhogi siddhoham balavan sukhi shivendra translates bound by hundreds hundred bonds bonds bound by hundred bonds devoured by wrath and lust unwearedly copied in a, amassing unjust gains which may serve their enjoyment which may serve interesting their enjoyment and satisfaction of their craving always always they think today i have gained this object of desire tomorrow i shall have the other today i have so much wealth more i will have tomorrow this this broke here the line somewhere disappeared they didn't put it okay i will continue here idam adhyamaya labdham this is today is gained by me idam prapsye this i will get desire tomorrow idam astidam this is and this is again api me bhavishyati will belong to me punardhanam again and again wealth my wealth Asau Mayahatach, this one is killed by me, Shatruch, the enemy. This enemy is killed by me today. Hanishye, I will kill Chaparan Api, and others I will kill tomorrow. No worry. Today this one, tomorrow others. Ishvaroham, I am the Lord. Aham Bhogi, I enjoy the world. Sidoham, I am realized, Balavan, I am powerful, Sukhi, I am happy. <laughs> it's not just joke, he is happy. I am full of treasures, Ardhyak, Abhijanan, Janavan Asmi, Kon Yosti Sadrishomaya, who is here, who is. Um, uh, similar to me, who is like me, I am here to, uh, I had to say, fulfilled, realized, the riches, the opulent. Yakshye dasyami modishye ityajnana vimohita. Yakshye, I will sacrifice. Dasyami, I shall give. Yeah, it's not a joke. He is ready to sacrifice and give Modishye, I will become happy, I will rejoice. Ityajnana vimohita. Thus they are bewildered by Ajnana. So this is all the description of the Asuric nature. So you can see how many funny things are here, <laughs> very familiar to us uh, as human beings, because we see them every day somewhere in some way or another. Mm, and we think mm, he's really, you know, what do you call it? Uh, ambitious. He is ambitious. <laughs> he can realize his dreams. <laughs> we can rely on him. He is good for business. He is good for this. He is good for that. Um, because he has his ambition. He has his uh, vision of what he wants to be. This is all this. Yeah. Okay, I will stop here and we if you have some thoughts, please share.
I'm talking too much. Yeah, you have to talk more, please. Yeah. So, uh, Vladimir, at the end, what what is the implication of I will sacrifice and I will give if he's such a selfish person, such a selfish being? Right. We will read about different types of sacrifices, giving what is uh, in three gunas, yes, sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. And we will see that all, even these actions which we consider to be holy are actually captured by these asuric forces. They are giving donations to this, to that, uh, fund of uh, the uh, studies of cancer, cancer institute, to this university funds are going, to that they are building, they're promoting knowledge and uh, science and so on. But there is something there which is which is different, yeah? That kind of aggrandizing oneself mm -hmm. through this. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, Elon Musk, yeah? Look at this guy, yeah? $200 billion in the pocket. Yeah, so there's something, uh, in spite of being so kind of generous, so-called, and supportive of development. By the way, he stopped uh, his startling for uh, Ukrainian forces in Russia stopped it suddenly, abruptly. He stopped it? Oh mm -hmm. no, I thought he was going to continue. Uh, just... And then he decided, you know, Paisa, Paisa is more important. You know. Oh, good Lord. Well, well, yeah, it's, it's up to him. You see this something, yeah, you know, it's a nature, nature is calling. <laughs> Whom did you call to help you? They will demand from you certain mm. behavior. Uh, amazing. Yeah, the world is amazing. It's a theater, and we are the actors in this theater, yes, as Shakespeare so said. <laughs> it's very true. It's very true, isn't it? And it's unpredictable, mm. yet Yes, it's amazing. Very entertaining if, if you can laugh like the Dalai Lama and have that uh, that joy of detachment, joy in detachment, I guess. Right. How is but, Dalai Lama doing? I didn't see him for a while. He disappeared I, somewhere. I follow him on Instagram, so he seems mm -hmm. to be doing all right. He's certainly aging. But, uh, and I think, he, I don't know the status of this, that he may, he may not appoint a re replacement because yeah, of yeah, the do. political situation. Yeah, China, who knows what will be there last yeah. year. Yeah. I believe the Chinese will not attack anyone because they, are, they didn't do this for thousands of years. They never attacked anyone. Everybody came with war to China rather than China to someone. Yeah, that's very. Uh, that's it's not in their nature. Yes, it's like mm. Indians. Yeah, I don't believe that India would attack anyone ever. Mm. These are old civilizations. They they value what they have. They can develop what they want. Yeah, they have yeah. their own power. Yeah, some other thoughts, no? Yes, Ask but the, the Asuric nature is working everywhere, in China, India, everywhere. Oh yeah, definitely. With us, yeah. also, with me every day, I, I have to face something, something of the survival of this, you know, a choice between selfishness and unselfishness. I have to choose, yeah? It's constantly there, as Jesus says, there is always yes or no, and you have to choose. Yeah, between the two. You can't stay uh, without choosing the path. It's a constant choice. And Asuric nature is here. We inherited it. It knocks onto our doors saying, I want my piece of cake. Where am I in all this? Do you think this is fair? <clears throat> And you can uh, just wonder, what is that? Who was that? <laughs> Can't be me, it's not true. 
but it is also part of myself somewhere. So it's funny. I, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think they are part of ourselves. I think it's only inter interferences in the thought process. Right. And okay. if you That's jump, uh, if you jump the the thought uh, mechanics, mm -hmm. then doesn't the, this kind of influence they can at, uh, attack you? But we have to to pay a lot of attention of what we are doing with our thinking capacity. The best is stop it. According to the Vedic vision, these two kind of armies of light and darkness are meeting within us, yeah? And we have to make a choice. It is ongoing battle anyhow, whether you want it or not, whether you admit it or not, it will be going on. That means if you don't admit that you have darkness, most probably you are on the side of light or maybe on the side of darkness. I don't know. <laughs> That's why I don't want to admit. But you have to decide. You have to check and see what is really going on within truthfully, openly, you know, without. It's not an easy task, truly speaking. I was thinking about myself quite a long time and was doubting until it certainty came that can't be that yes there are elements of it there is selfishness there is this there is desire there is this there is that insecurity fear all of those elements of our nature are there you know uh, this kind of self-assertiveness or, or superiority complex dumba all these uh, darpa all all these elements are there hiding and they're subtly suggesting coming out in thought, in word. Yeah, they are very smoothly found the way through your consciousness because they live long, long time there from the past. Everybody is using them. Look at this world. Everybody is asserting himself. Look at, I don't want to go to politics because I don't want us to split into these parts. Trump, <laughs> how he is asserting himself. It's a, it's a, you can't believe this is possible. Possible, <laughs> possible. And it works. The most funny part, it works. Where are we in all this? What, who we are and what is waiting for us if that is possible. Yeah? So there are many questions about our nature. Yes, but even when we are uh, influenced uh, from the devas in the opposite uh, stream, I think what the only what we are doing is balancing. And I think is the best is jump the 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 thoughts if if we can be free about thinking i think it, this is the best this is the freedom because even when we are thinking so positive or so yeah sad big i think what we are doing is only to make a balance of the other forces but in the end we are in the same it's position good beginning to have a balance it's a good beginning then we will have to take the side of the light and start kind of working with the light more. Yeah, but the, coming through the balance is a not bad way, actually, because otherwise there will be always some fake. You will come to the light and then you will fall into the darkness very fast. Yeah, And you will be not in control of yourself. First thing is to start controlling your energies and to find your position, your witness position, which would allow you to observe what is going on in your field of mental and vital field. Um, and then something would become possible. Yes, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, somebody else, some other ideas before we close? No? Jai Sri, yeah, yeah. In the center of my picture, I can see you. 
Are you unmuted? You have to unmute yourself. Click on this microphone. Uh, yeah, this um, just- Yeah, I got kicked out of the screen. Hmm. Um, no, I was just listening. It's very interesting to hear everybody's thoughts on this very important Asuric and Devic natures, you know. And you're right, both exist in us. We have to make the choice every moment, possibly if we can, but definitely number of times during the day. We have to make that choice. <laughs> Yes, and to, uh, who we are, either Daivik or Asuric, depends of what choices we make most, yes? And that means if we choose the truth in spite of being overloaded with darkness, that means some Daivik nature is predominant in us, you know? even in spite of being overloaded, yeah? Or if we are overloaded with light and we choose the the wrong choices, that means something is wrong with us already. Right. All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for today. And I will close the mantra. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha Sarve santo niramaya Sarve bhadrani Pashyantu makashchit dukha bhag bhavet om shanti 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 happy lunar eclipse dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this is how it today's topic is very relevant for lunar eclipse which is coming so it will be five o'clock in the morning. You can come out and see what happens to the moon in the sky. I I can show you the the moon here. Oh, in you Spain. already have it. Oh. I, yeah. Oh, sorry. It's so cloudy. I can. Oh. Yeah. That's yes, yes. I have already. <laughs> sorry. It's so cloudy. Thank you for trying. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good week. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.